All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how to write a fairly straightforward uh, program for our calculator. Now, uh, there's a handout, so to speak, a little document I put together uh, that goes along with this, and that can be downloaded from your Canvas account. Okay, um, so... The first thing that might be on your mind is what is a program if you've never done any programming before um, it's uh, can be kind of a mystery so I think the best way to explain it is to use oh say something like uh, a cookbook uh, where we might find a recipe and a recipe gets uh, some sort of ingredients uh, we can uh, we have ingredients and then uh, and there's uh, sometimes that's one of the steps where you get the ingredients but normally if you're making making something you have all your ingredients at hand uh, and those are really the inputs to your recipe and then you're following a set of steps uh, you know, put the dry ingredients in a bowl and mix and until they're thoroughly blended, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, of course, depending on what the recipe is. And then the result then or the final output uh, of doing this task then is some sort of a dish. Uh, could be a pie, could be beef stew, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that there's an ordered set of steps uh, that are gone through. And that's much the same for a program. A program is also a set of ordered uh, steps. And generally there's some sort of inputs. And <clears throat> in the case of the calculator, these inputs probably come from the user. But... Uh, This is the data that the program needs to work on, uh, manipulate, solve, whatever it is. But again, it's a set of steps in order that accomplish some sort of a result or results plural. So then a program is just an ordered set of steps. Uh, written in some particular language and the language that we're using in our calculator uh, is called TI basic The basic computer language has been around for almost as long as there's been PC computers it stands for beginner all-purpose symbolic instruction code um, and uh, it's pretty straightforward to use. It's well documented and so forth. Okay. So the next question that might be on your mind is, well, why do I need to write a program in the first place? Doesn't the calculator have everything built into it that I need? The short answer to that is no, it does not. It has a rich variety of math functions that it can perform, but many of the mathematically related problems that we need to get solutions for are combinations of those functions. Um, and uh, that's going to be illustrated pretty well uh, by what we want our first pro program to be. And that is we want to solve a quadratic equation. So as a reminder, a quadratic equation in standard form is ax squared plus bx plus C equal zero. This is in standard form, which means that the variable is in order of decreasing power. This is X to the second power, X to the first power. There is no X here. Okay, and A, B, and C are just numbers. If we solve this standard form of a quadratic equation for X, because we really want to know what X is, um, we can use the quadratic formula and that's how it was how it came about uh, by using a couple of different methods 
uh, for solving quadratics, uh, we find out then that x is equal to a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and this is all over 2a. So what we want to do then is we want to create a program that does this for us. It gets some inputs, a, b, and c, from our user and does the calculation and spits out our, our values for x. Now, when you are going to create a program for your calculator, or anything else for that matter, these are kind of general purpose programming guidelines, uh, but particularly um, in writing them for calculators like this, uh, we want to look for trouble spots that we might have to compensate for in our code when we write the code to do this. And there's a couple of them here that we need to pay attention of. First of all, we have a formula. And by the way, formulas make great uh, ideas for programs. Uh, you might want to think about, uh, since you've had a little bit of trig and you know the Pythagorean theorem, you know, can you make the calculator uh, figure out uh, what the third side is, for example. Okay, but we'll save that for a different video. <clears throat> um, all right, so the first thing that, that kind of waves its red flag to me is this variable in a denominator. I'm always looking for variables and denominators when I'm writing code because if that variable can go to zero, then the, the whole thing blows up. Division by zero is undefined, and that will cause my program to crash. Um, so it might be necessary in code to check uh, when the user enters in the value for A that it's not zero. Um, and I'm not sure how big of a worry that is. Uh, when I'm dealing with quadratic equations, uh, if I had a zero for A, that zeroes out this whole term and the thing ceases to be a quadratic even. So I'm not sure how often that would happen. But in a really robust program, you would want to check your, your inputs to make sure that uh, they're in some sort of a valid range. We're not going to worry about division by zero in this program. Uh, only because I'm trying to create really a pretty straightforward, simple program that tests the concept of putting the quadratic equation into program form in my calculator. Okay, so what else might I need to worry about? Well, the other thing that could crash my program is if the value under the radical here uh, becomes negative less than zero, otherwise, uh, in other words. Um, <clears throat> because the square root <clears throat> of a negative number uh, is an imaginary value. It's in the imaginary uh, domain, uh, number domain, not the domain of real numbers. And we're not dealing with imaginary numbers uh, in this particular course. Uh, so I really don't want to worry about this, but since it's unlikely that the user can tell by just looking at uh, the quadratic that it's going to have imaginary roots or not, uh, we might actually want to put this test in our calculator. And to do that, all we need to do is do the arithmetic that's under the radical and then test to see if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, it's a negative value and it's going to produce imaginary roots. Okay, uh, there's no other real trouble spot here. Uh, the other thing that I see is that I need to do this calculation twice because um, there is no such operator that does both plus and minus at the same time. So I'm going to have to do minus b plus the radical stuff 
and the minus b minus the radical stuff. So this calculation will have to be done twice. Okay, so let's uh, let's just kind of rough out uh, what our program needs to do. Uh, sort of like a list of steps that we need to accomplish. This is always good practice to do it, uh, regardless of what uh, code you're writing. Okay, the first thing that we might want our program to do uh, is to show the user its title. Since I may have more than one program in there, I might want to know the title of the program that I am running. Okay. Well, really, the very next thing we need to do is to get the values for A, B, and C. All right, so we get A, B, and C. And once we have those values, we can then do that test, because we do need to find out if this thing is going to be... Um, produce imaginary roots or real roots. So we want to, we'll just make a note here, test for imaginary roots. So if we have imaginary roots, if that's true, then let's tell the user let's tell the user that we have imaginary roots otherwise or else if it's not true it's going to be false otherwise we want to do the calculation or the plus root and do the calculation for the negative root. I say negative root or positive root. Uh, it's really based on uh, you know what's here. We're doing the plus and the, the negative here. And then of course we want to display the results. So this is pretty much the picture uh, of what we're trying to do. And then we actually have a fair amount of detail here, enough that we can pretty easily create our program from this list of steps. Being able to do this as you read through here uh, ensures that you're covering uh, what you need to do in order to do this. So what that leaves then is actually writing this in uh, TI basic code. All right, so to do that, let's move over here to the calculator and we'll turn it back on. And you'll notice that right here, practically in the center of the calculator, uh, is a key with PRGM for program in it. And this is where we want to go. And when we press this key, we get uh, three categories up here. If there were any programs to execute, they would probably show up here. Um, this calculator does not retain any programs, uh, one, uh, the software, once I uh, shut the software down. Um, but we could edit any existing code. Your, your program will show up here, so you can edit it and go back in and change it, refine it, whatever you need to do, correct bugs. And then lastly, we can create a new program. Well, that's what we're going to do, because we're assuming we don't have any kind of a quad solver built in so we want to create a new program and under new we only have one option and that is create a new program so that's what we want to do and so we are now actually in the program editing mode the first thing though that we want to do is give our program a file name and I want you to notice the cursor here it's blinking and it has the letter A in it, that tells us that the alpha lock is on. So all the keys that I'm pressing here 
it will put up the green letter uh, character there on the screen and not the math function. And if you're going to do more than one or two uh, letters in a row, characters in a row, you might want to turn on the alpha lock. So that's a second, the second function key, then press the alpha key, that turns on the alpha lock. All right, let's just call our program quad. So Q, U, A, D. I missed the A. Didn't register. Okay, that's the file name. All right. We're now, uh, actually, this is more the, the program editor. That was the preliminary stuff. Uh, each line of code will start with a colon. That's something internal uh, to TI Basic. We don't need to worry the whys and wherefores other than recognize the fact that this is the start of a new line. All right, so let's tell the user what the name of our program is and let's call it quad solver so we want to display that text if we press the program when we're in the program editor when we press the program key it brings up a list of commands that are available in the TI basic language in other words these are are the language constructs uh, in, inside the language and they're in two categories those that control the execution of the program. Remember, this is an ordered set of steps. So these are things that can affect that order. And it also has uh, a category of input output stuff. So prompting and displaying and getting keys from the keyboard and other things are here. Well, we want to display some text. So we'll click on three here. And uh, we want to display the title so we will write the title here. It's going to be a number of characters. So let's turn on the alpha lock. So second function, you get that up arrow, and then the alpha key, and we have turned on alpha lock. Okay. Without alpha lock, we have to hit the alpha key ahead of each character we want to type. So it just saves a little bit of typing to put it in alpha lock mode. Uh, the first thing we need is a set of double quotes. Text that we are displaying on the screen should always be between double quotes. Okay, so we just want to make this, let's call it quad solver. So Q, U, A, D. The space is down here. It's that little channel looking thing. Uh, it's the alpha zero key. Okay, quad solver. So S O L V E R. And it looks like I have a Q instead of an O up there. Uh, let's close our quotes here and then I'll just backspace here and change that to an O. Okay. Get to the end of the line and press enter. I'm now back to my next empty line. All right, so we've done this part. We have displayed the title. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to prompt the user <clears throat> to input the values for A, B, and C. And this is done with a command called prompt. So let's click on the program key. It's an input output function and it's function number two prompt. <clears throat> and you'll see what it does when we run the program. But it prompts the user and allows us to take whatever the user types in and stuff it into a variable. Remember, variables in a program are the same as variables out here in code. I mean, in uh, algebra. Okay, so we're using two. 
we want a prompt for the value of a and we're going to put it in a variable called a. So let's do alpha a. And we'll do the same thing for b and c. So that was program io 2 for prompt. This time we want b. And then io 2 alpha c. Enter. Okay, so this will prompt the user uh, for these three values. And it will store them in variable called A and a variable called B and a variable called C. And now that we have those, this might be a good place to do this test. So we're going to set up this if then else construct uh, in code. So what we want to do is we want to calculate this. We want to do this calculation under the radical. We don't need to take the square root. Just do this calculation and find out if it's negative or not. <clears throat> so let's do the calculation. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to start with parentheses b square minus parentheses 4 a, C, close this parenthesis, close this parenthesis, and then I'm going to store it in a variable called K. This uh, expression under the radical actually has a name. It's called the discriminant. But uh, that's math jargon, so who cares? All right, so this is the code we're going to write here. So let's do our opening parenthesis. Let's do alpha b and let's square it minus and in parentheses are 4 alpha a alpha c. Okay, the calculator is smart enough to know that when we have these things placed next we have these things placed next to each other the implied operation is multiplication. Okay, so let's close this term and close our whole expression. And then to store it into a variable, here it was done automatically, but to explicitly store it in a variable, we use the store key down here. And let's put it in alpha k. All right, so we've done this calculation. Now we need to set up this true-false thing. And we're going to use the idea of less than zero. So if and if is a function in, in the language, so it uses parentheses. OK, so if k is less than zero, that's our test. If stuff, uh, if is like a little subprogram, and we pass at this expression, and it does a test, it finds out whether whatever is stored in k is less than zero. If k is less than zero, well, if returns true or false, uh, let's use a little bit of programming junk here. Uh, in the old days, we drew flowcharts for the programs. And decision making uh, was done using a diamond. So if k is less than 0, that's the test. Our program comes in here. And if it's true, we'll go out this way. And if it's false, we'll go out the bottom here. So what do we want it to do if it's true? If k is less than 0, that means then that it's a negative value underneath the radical. So what we want to do, since we're not going to actually do any processing for imaginary roots, we just want to tell the user uh, that it's not a real root.
and we'll just be real simplistic here. And then basically we'll just have the program end. Okay. But if this is not true, if k is not less than zero, then it means we have the likelihood of roots that are in the uh, real number domain. So if that's the case, then we want to do the calculations. I'm going to write else here like I did here, because this is what separates the flow of the program. We can come down here, we do the test, and if it's true, the program flow goes here, tells the user about it, and the program ends. Otherwise, it continues on and does what comes next. All right, so let's go over here to program, select our if statement. So if we want to put this in parentheses, if k is less than. Now, we have less than, greater than, less than, and equal to, not equal to. All these relational uh, tests are in uh, a menu called test on the calculator. So, we, and these are available outside. You, you don't have to be in program mode to use this stuff. Uh, these are the, um, the the program ones are the other ones that, that we need. Anyway, never mind. Uh, let's do second function test. And the less than is the fifth one. So let's do that. So if k is less than 0. If that's true. Then. 2. If that's true, we're on this path right now. Okay, so we're going this away. All right, so then what we want to do is display. That's an I.O. Number three. So display, and let's put it in alpha lock. Double quotes. And let's tell the user not And do a space not R E A not real roots. Close our quotes. We don't have to write end or anything there, although we could. Uh, well, we really don't want to do that because these three things together, and that's a, an E, not an A. So if true, then do this, else do that. That's basically what, what that is saying. Okay. So let's go here and find else. That's right down here in number three. So else we do this. So there's no way then that doing this stuff crashes into what we wrote down here. So these are the two ways that the code can go, either down here or out here. So we've taken care of this branch. Now we're doing the else branch. So now we need to do these calculations. All right. Since we already know the value of this and have assigned it to K, we can use that in our program. We don't need to rewrite that. But we do have a fraction here. So I want to put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses. So let's start with an opening parenthesis. Let's do our negative B. Make sure you use your 
uh, negative key, not the subtraction key. And we'll do the plus root first. So it's going to be plus, and we need a square root. So that's second function, square root. Notice that it's a function and it has opening and closing parentheses. Like I said, we've already really done this calculation. It's stored in a variable called k. So alpha k close the square root function, close the numerator, divided by, open the denominator, and that's 2 alpha a, close the denominator, and we want to store this value in a variable, uh, let's use d. The store key is right here, that gives us a symbol of an arrow, in other words put that in a variable called d, d. Okay, we need to basically write the same line again, but this time make this a minus. So let's open our numerator, our negative b, this time minus the square root. of k, close the square root, close the numerator, divide by, open our denominator, 2 times alpha a, close the denominator, and let's store this in a variable called e. The choices for variables, uh, you know, basically you have the, the letters of the alphabet, and the choices of D and E are arbitrary. You can choose something else if you want. Okay, so now that we've done these calculations, uh, it's time to display those results. So let's press the program key, because we're going to use I-O and the display function. And we want to display um, us display D. So this will display the contents of the variable D. If I put double quotes around it, then it would just display the letter D. Okay, but D is a variable, and this means go out to the location called D, get its contents, and throw that up on the screen. All right, and then of course we want to do the same thing here, where we are displaying the contents of E. And then lastly, we want to end our if-then-else construct. Strictly speaking, you could leave that off. The program would still execute okay. But it's good to follow, uh, you know, with a little bit of rigor, uh, how you put your programs together. Don't get haphazard in your programming. And 7 is our end function. And that's all we need. So, if I made no mistakes in syntax, I made no mistakes in the flow of the code here, uh, our program stands a good chance of running. So, to get out of programming mode, it's a second and then quit. Okay, so we're now back to normal operation of the calculator. So to run the program, we go to the program key again, and this time it shows what uh, programs we have, and this is the only program that's stored in the computer right now, uh, and we want to execute it, so we can just press enter. And it begins by telling us program quad, that's the file name, and then we'll press enter, and that prints out that, and I see I have a mistake. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, didn't spell solve right, but that's okay. We, we don't care at this point. We just want to test the operation of our program. Okay, so we need a test function. Uh, so uh, one that I already know the roots for are 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. So this is our A, this is our B, and this is our C. And if we were to do this manually, we should get the two values for x being um, the, the uh, I don't want to write plus here, because it turns out that both these roots are negative. Uh, the first root should be a negative 5, and the second root should be a negative 2. Okay, so let's see if that happens. If I put my 2 in, it's now prompting for B, which is 5, and prompting for C, which is 2 again. And when I press Enter, it gives me the roots of negative 0.5 and negative 2, and then prints up the message, Done meaning that the program has completed. Okay, we did not get any errors, but we have only tested the case where k is greater than zero. Okay, let's find out if our other path here executes. And we can do that by changing the variables. Uh, this time we're going to use um, x squared plus 5x plus c, uh, not c, <laughs> plus 7 uh, equals 0. And uh, this should produce imaginary roots. I don't know what they are, uh, but I know this does not produce real roots. All right, so let's run the program again. And A is 1. There's no, no number written in front, but we know in front of any variable there is a 1. Okay, so A is 1. B is 5. And C is seven and we get the message not real roots and the program ends okay so we've now tested uh, both paths that the program flow can take and it seems to be okay so we might want to uh, just for the heck of it solve a couple of other quadratics just to make sure everything runs okay and these come right out of the book uh, let's say we have 5x squared minus 22x equal 0. Okay, so let's start our program. A is 5, this is our A, this is our B, and it's a negative 22. There is no C. So our C then is going to be zero. So A is five. B is a negative 22. And C is zero. And we get the roots of 4.4 and zero, which means that one leg of the quadratic, uh, if we were to graph it, goes through the origin. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say I have x squared, well, let's make it 2x squared plus 6x plus 3 equals 0. So this is our a, our b, and our C. 
So let's execute the program. And A is 2, B is 6, and C is 3. Okay, I get uh, both the roots are on the negative side uh, of the origin on the x-axis, and you might want to round these up, uh, you know, or leave it at 0.63, and this one is uh, minus... Uh, two point, you could round that up to 2.4 uh, or 2.37. We could actually put that in code. Okay, so that's good. Now, it's driving me crazy here that I have a mistake. So I want to go in here. Uh, I want to correct my spelling of solver. So this time I want to go into edit. I want to edit this program that's already there. And then I want to come up here. It's actually in the first line. So it's S-O-L V. Ah, I got six. Well, I got six because I need it's alpha. Okay, so now it's got that. I can do my second quit. And let's run it one more time to make sure I didn't do something to make it blow up. So let's run our quad program. And let's enter in, again, some quadratic. Uh, let's do x squared plus 15x minus 12. Okay. So a is 1. B is 15, and C is negative 12. And again, we get some nice roots, and uh, we get lots of uh, decimal places here. And uh, so this is a good, good case for rounding up uh, some of this extra stuff here. All right. One last thing I want to talk about, uh, and let me bring up our program listing here, uh, as it is in the document out there on Canvas. Uh, this is the code that we put in, and clearly there's room for improvement. The idea here was to write code, uh, kind of create a straw horse, as it were, to test the concept of solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula in our calculator. Uh, we might want to test for A to make sure that A is not zero. Uh, I don't see that as a real critical issue. But we could certainly be more uh, verbose in displaying our um, uh, results um, rather than just saying what the numbers are. We could say x equals, uh, and then whatever the value d is, and e is. So this could be fixed up so it's a little more user friendly. Okay. So anyway, uh, read through the document, try this programming exercise, see what you get, and then play with it a little bit. Find out uh, what makes things work. Uh, see if you can do some kind of a fix up. But let me warn you ahead of time, uh, programming, um, there's two opportunities for error. It can be in the syntax, uh, and I close that too, too fast. If I make a mistake, now spelling doesn't matter up here of, of what text is, but if I misspell one of the keywords for basic, and these are keywords, prompt, if, then, display, else, that sort of thing, um, or I put some strange thing there, 
uh, I can get what's referred to as a syntax error. In other words, the structure of the code itself is at fault, uh, how I wrote the, the code word. Now, the trickier bugs, those are pretty easy to find generally. The tougher code to find when there is errors uh, are the logic errors. That means logic in the flow. The program itself, uh, or the calculator itself, does not know whether this is the correct path or not. If I didn't do this test correctly, and didn't bother testing what the results were on both the paths, that program would go out having uh, a pretty serious flaw in how the program flow goes. Those are called logic errors. So those are the two areas where errors occur. And getting syntax errors fixed, you always want to do that first before you start shooting for the logic errors and testing your code. And of course, the more complex the code is, uh, the more difficult the task of testing it become, becomes. So, And you always want to test with something that you know what the answer is supposed to be uh, so that you can uh, get into it. In uh, one of my practice videos for this particular topic, uh, when I was doing my uh, uh, the last calculation for the root, I had my B down here, my negative B, I had it squared like it was here. And of course, I was getting the wrong, wrong answer. <laughs> so, uh, see, that's a case where it didn't kick out a syntax error. Uh, the uh, programming language doesn't care what I, what I do as long as I don't violate the syntax. But that was a logic error. Uh, I was squaring something when I shouldn't have. Okay, there you have it. Have some fun. Lots of practice. Like anything else, it takes lots of practice. All right, see you in the next video.